Father, we just come before you this morning just to worship, just to praise, just to glorify the King of glory. Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord, strong and mighty. He is the Lord, mighty in battle. Father, so we come before you this morning, O oh God. And we say to oh God, if you say, we believe. If you say, Lord, it is done. So we over our lives, over our homes, over our families, over our jobs, over our business, over our schooling, over our university. Lord, if you say, we believe. We come into agreement with that which has been declared in the heavenlies. Father, to this morning, we take away, oh God, all negativity and every negative thought and every, oh God, thought that is not of you. Father, we cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. We bring into captivity every thought of the evil one. We declare, oh God, that you are God and there is no one like you. You are God all by yourself. We bless you. We bless you in this place. Father, we declare an open heaven over this house and over your people, a place where you speak, a place where you move, a place where your heart is revealed. We bless you, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge. I will say of the Lord, he's my strength. I will say of the Lord, he's my strong tower. I will say of the Lord, he's my righteousness. I bless his name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. of your people. We declare an open heaven this morning. Father, that even as they leave this place, they would never leave the same way they walked in. They would leave with a word. They would leave with a song. They would leave with an encounter. They would leave, oh God, knowing, oh God, that you got them, oh God. And so we declare today, oh God, that we come against every power, every spirit of wickedness, every heaviness every way in the name of Jesus just have your way in this place just have your way in this place we honor you Lord we honor you Lord and surely your goodness and mercy will follow me every time i turn around surely your goodness and mercy will follow me every time i turn around surely your goodness and mercy will follow me every time i turn around surely your goodness and mercy will follow me Every time I turn around, every time I turn around, we bless you. We bless you. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. You are worthy of all honor in this place. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. Get that song. Bless your name in Jesus' name. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 29, the Bible says, And David said, What have I done now? Is there not a cause? Look at this. He's asking two questions. He says, What have I done now? And is there not a cause? He's the people that came against him, his, his own brothers, Eliab led an accusation against him and says, have you come here? We know your pride. We know the naughtiness of your heart. For you have come that, uh, that you may see the battle. 
and they and then he asked him the question and he said and, and he says what have i done now he says i didn't do anything to deserve this accusation i didn't do but then he makes another statement and he says is there not a cause amen this is the powerful thing he says i've come here yes you may accuse me that I've come with an evil intention or wrong intention. But he says, is there not a cause? Is there not a reason? Why? Goliath is beginning to shout. He's taunting Israel and Israel is hiding in their tents. And he's saying, is there not a cause? Amen. I want you to understand that sometimes people get comfortable in certain environments. People get comfortable sometimes and even although they, 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 they are afraid of, of, of Goliath, they don't want anybody else that can do what they can't do. Amen. Sometimes you get misunderstood when you stand up when other people are running. Amen. But you got to understand something that the Bible says, he, David asks, is there not a cause? And, the, and, and it leads into a, a series of events after that, that he goes and he speaks. Because David was inquiring, what is happening here? Yes, I came to deliver a meal for my brothers. I came to deliver bread and, and cheeses that my dad sent. But I've, I've, there is something more that is in store. And I pray today and ask the question that when we see things, when we see the Goliaths, we must not run and cower in afraid of what the enemy has to say. But we should be bold. Amen. Amen. We shall be like David and, and says, is there not a cause? And then in verse 48 it says, and it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came to draw near to David, that David moved and he ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. How do you face your battle? Not on your back foot. When the enemy moved, he moved. Amen. If you want to begin to be victorious over the enemy, when the enemy moves, you must move. You cannot stand and wait for the enemy to come towards you. You cannot lose ground. The, the whole strategy, if you've seen boxes in the ring, the boxes don't wait at the one end of the ring uh, against the ropes. He comes to meet his opponent in the center because he wants the, his opponent not to take ground against him. He wants to begin to take ground against the, the enemy. And so you've got to come on the offensive. Tell your neighbor, go on the offensive. That means you're not waiting for to be attacked. You're not on your back foot. You're moving already forward. As soon as the enemy moves, you must move. Because if you're not going to move, the enemy is going to box you in. Amen. So you've got to learn how to begin to move. And then he goes on and David put his hand in his bag and took thence a stone and a sling. And he smote the enemy in the forehead. And the stone sunk into his forehead and he fell face to, to the earth. And David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. And he smote the Philistine. And there was no sword in the hand of David. Amen. Look at it. There's no sword in the hand of David. Therefore David ran and he stood upon the Philistine. And he took his, his sword. And he drew it out of the sheath. And he cut, he cut off his head. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. I want you to understand, how do you take out a Goliath? Firstly, you, when they move, you move. Amen? The second thing is you use what God has given you. So that you take out the giant. Amen? Then thirdly, what does he do? When the giant falls, don't go around jumping. You know, like, you know, it's like when we, we used to play cricket and you used to play soccer. When you score a goal, you, you run all around the ground. Amen. He went to stand on top of there. When you, you want to make sure that the enemy is dead. 
Amen? So it's almost like he wanted to kill him dead. Is it? Because he then he goes in and then what he didn't have, he took, he takes out of the sheet of, of Goliath. He takes out his own sword. And he cuts off his head. I want you to understand the reason he had to take off the head of, of, of Goliath. Because there was an army that was behind Goliath that was still running toward them that was still prepared to engage in a battle i want you to understand sometimes you got to learn how to finish off your enemy and don't have to come back and face the same enemy again some of us some of us are this are happy to just win a round but you see the only way the battle stops is when you take out the enemy completely amen and i say whatever has been fighting you May the Lord give you a strategy to overcome the enemy. Whatever has been fighting you, what has been fighting the, the grace of God over your life, fighting the favor of God over your life, may the Lord give you the grace to begin to take it out. Amen. And in this, I want you to understand, he's taking out the enemy, but the Bible says he takes out Goliath and the whole army of the Philistines retreat. Because when Goliath stood, an army stood. But when Goliath falls, everything that Goliath represents will fall also. Yes. Come on. Yes. You see why it's important for you to take out your Goliath? is because Goliath has got company. And the only way that the company starts to turn and the company starts to run is when you begin to take out the Goliath. Because as long as Goliath was standing, they were standing. But the moment that he takes out the Goliath, they begin to flee. Amen. I want you to understand today that, 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 that Goliath in your life has company. And the reason you need to take out the Goliath is so that the company will begin to flee. Amen. The children of Israel, David stood with no company. He stood alone. It's okay to stand alone. Amen. Tell your neighbor it's okay to stand alone. You see, some of you like to take company into the fight. You, you know when you used to get into the fight, you'd go with your friends. And you always got that one fella, they call him killer. But he is the smallest fellow, the weakest fellow, but with the biggest mouth. And he will tell all the wrong things and he will stir up the problem. But he'll be the first one to run. You, you know Killer, eh? Okay. You, Killer may have a different name for you. You could call him Cheese, whatever. But, you know, but Killer had a name, right? But I want you to understand how to stand. I pray today that God will give you the ability to stand. Because the Goliaths in our lives must fall. The Goliaths in our lives must fall. But the question that, that he asked, is there not a cause? If you don't see a need for God to intervene, if you don't see a need to take out that enemy, that enemy, that Goliath will keep on taunting you, it will keep on attacking you, it will keep on going after your life. Amen. So I want to just encourage you today. Amen. Let's begin to trust God with us. Father, we come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. The enemies, oh God, we declare today that the enemies that we see today, we will see them no more. We pray today over the lives of your people, whatever the Goliath in their life is, that you will give them victory. That you will give them victory this morning. Come on. Somebody that is facing something. Someone, someone that is trusting God for a breakthrough in their lives. Come on, you won't you just open up your mouth and say, God, I'm coming into the prayer of agreement today. My Goliath may not be a physical one, but it may be a spiritual one. It may be a one that I'm dealing with. It may be that situation that we cannot find a solution for. It may be the situation that we feel that we cannot overcome. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, hey, Father, in the name of Jesus, we cast down imaginations and every high thing.
that the Goliaths who got in our minds, the Goliaths that try to rule our lives, the Goliaths that stand before us, O oh God, today will fall, will fall in the name of Jesus. You have given us total and complete victory over the enemy. And in the end, the enemy has no hold over God's property. And in the name of Jesus, show up, O oh God, this morning. Show up this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you the praise. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. Have your way in this place. Have your way in our lives. This we ask in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said amen and amen, amen, amen. God bless you, amen. You're blessed to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Won't you just greet somebody, amen? I want to just encourage those that are in the back, amen, the back rows. Come, come to the front, amen. If you've got only hand babies, amen, you can be there in the back, amen. The, if the babies can walk and talk, amen, let's come to the front a little bit. There's enough chairs here in the front, amen. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Let's, in, let's rejoice before the Lord, amen. Hallelujah. Surely goodness and mercy right now before us all the days, God, amen. God's house, we give him praise. All the glory belongs to him right now. Come on, church, come down. We declare, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me. Every time I turn around, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me. Every time, every time I turn around, surely your goodness and mercy will follow me. Every time, Lord, every time I turn around. 
making declarations. Amen. Oh, our God is a faithful God. Amen. You see, see your life. See your life right now. Things have changed. Amen. You're not the same as you were before. Amen. Hallelujah, Joash. <laughs> see my life. Not so so wonder if they know if they know my God what is is a miracle worker. let's stay there right now see my life you see somebody see my life turn to somebody right now come on you say you so so not so so wonder and tell them if they know if they know my God
Amen. And he's working some things out right now. Because the days are going to be greater. Your ladder is going to be greater. But when we start declaring who our God is and what he can do. And you speak of the goodness. Come on. You serve a very big God. Come on. Believe it. Come on, everybody. A very big God. Oh, he knows it for my song is called Omega. It means he's a God that does good. You believe that? Amen. He's a God that does good. Come on, let me declare that right now. Amen. Hey.
of you father your favor open door after open door mighty God you're working it out oh God no matter how hard it seems right now but God is in it with you
Jesus. We just glorify your name, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your promises, Lord. You're faithful, you're faithful, Lord. Oh, worship you, my him.
So we thank you, O oh God, for the ways in which you move over our lives. Oh, the way that you begin to minister to us. I pray over the lives of your people this morning that our worship will ascend before you as a sweet-smelling aroma. You are worthy. You are worthy. All blessing and honor and glory. You are worthy. worthy. You are worthy. All blessing and honor and glory. You are worthy. You are worthy.
Father, we give you all the praise, all the glory, all the honor. Not only for what you do, for who you are in our lives. We do not praise you just for what you have done or what you are going to do. But we praise you just because of who you are. Just because of who you are, we give you glory. Because of who you are, we give you praise. So Father, today, we stand, O oh God, in anticipation for your workings and your doings in our lives. We declare, O oh God, that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. That there is yet an ever-increasing measure of your glory. There's an ever-increasing measure of your presence. So bless us, O oh God, even as we continue in your presence this morning. As we gather around your word, we believe the entrance of your word brings light and life. Bless us. Bless our children, even as they go to Sunday school, that you will be with them. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. And amen, amen, amen. You may be seated. Just for a moment before our Sunday school can go, I know, I know Pastor Maggie and the team prayed with you uh, last week amen but i want to pray with our children amen i know all of them have, some of them already started exams and those that are going to be starting in the next few weeks amen I want you to stand where you are all of our children that are writing exams amen and some of our older children that are writing exams that means those that are in university amen we know that we don't only have young students amen but we have some elder learners that adult learners that are at university amen amen bless the lord bless the lord amen it's good to see you amen it's good to see you amen you should say it's nice to be seen <laughs> amen hallelujah amen. amen we pray god's favor upon you for some of you whose children are not here you can just trust god for them you can just raise your hand and we trust god together for them that God will give them favor and good success. Amen. I pray that this in this exam that God will give you the favor and good success. That God will watch over you. Amen. But I want you to understand that there's no reward without sacrifice. Amen. Tell, you, tell, tell somebody there's no reward without sacrifice. Because some of us like to have rewards but we do not want to pay the price. Amen. There's no reward without sacrifice. Let's pray together. Father, I thank you. Even as we bring our children before you, those our adult learners that are writing exams, those that have already started, those that are going to be starting in the next few weeks, I pray, O oh God, for that you would give them an alert mind, give them a mind that will be able to take in information, understand it, and process it, Give them favor and good success in the mighty name of Jesus. We believe in you, Father, that you are a great and an awesome God. So we pray a blessing today over your sons and over your daughters. You care for them. So I pray, O oh God, the protection of God upon them. I pray the covering of God. Keep them in good health and strength. Give their minds, O oh God, the ability, O oh God, that they will never be anxious, but they will be bold and strong. I pray, O oh God, the anointing that was upon Daniel and upon Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego that set them apart from all of the other children of Israel. Father, I pray that you, O oh God, will anoint them. Anoint them with the anointing of Joseph with divine strategies and creative ideas. Father, bless them in the sciences and in maths. Bless them in English and in the languages, oh God. I pray in Jesus' name, Father, over every subject matter that they would engage in, that your God will begin to give them an insight in the name of Jesus. I pray over the energy levels will never be depleted but they will be strong i pray oh god they will be diligent oh god they will be insightful in the name of jesus they will be focused and i pray today in the mighty name of jesus for your hand of favor over your children so bless them with favor and good success this year let there be testimonies 
of victories. Let there be testimonies of even areas that they found difficulty in, in and how the Holy Spirit helped them. And so Holy Spirit help them. Be with them. Be their guide. Lead them into all truth. Give them favor and good success. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Thank you. God bless you. You may be seated. Thanks to the worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. You're blessed. Amen. Our Sunday school may leave. Amen. And uh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord again. Amen. Amen. Well, greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, amen. It's good to be back just to be together with you as a family. Thank you for your prayers and your support. Thank you as well for the leadership that held the fort uh, uh, down and kept everything going in terms of the ministry. We really appreciate Pastor Maggie, Neil, Lorenzo, and the leadership. Thank you for your support, amen, in making sure that the house of God and the people of God have been served. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. 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 I do not know whether you are not happy to see me or not. Amen. But I'm happy to be here. Amen. Whether you want to see me or don't want to see me. Amen. Amen. I'm happy to be back. Amen. Amen. And so I want to just share with you some things uh, in our uh, recent, in, in the recent time that we were away, it has been really an uh, eye opener. And there was several things that we looked at and some several things that we encountered. But one of the things that I realized that the world is the same everywhere you go. People are the same, challenges are the same. We may speak a different language, look a little bit different, but we all have the same things. And if you want to know, if you ever travel a little bit, you'll see that over the past few years, there seems to be an equalization in the earth, that everywhere in the earth, everybody is dealing with the same things, especially in the church. And so, so I don't feel out of place anywhere, amen? You, and, and, and this thing of one nation has been better than another is a lie. It's a really false, amen? And uh, I want you to know that the grass is not always greener on the other side. Amen? It's different, amen? But it's not greener, amen? So we're glad to be here, amen? So... Uh, 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 we were grateful. We were grateful to the opportunities God allowed us to have. Many doors opened, many new doors opened, and we're so grateful for it. And there are some several things that I'll share with you all in weeks to come about what God is doing. But I want us go into the Word of the Lord today. We're talking about building. Amen. I started on Wednesday from from the book of Haggai, and in the book of Haggai, chapter two. The question that the Lord asked Haggai to share with the people is, and the question was, how do you see it, and how do you see it now? That means there was a two generations, and we spoke about the aspect of two generations looking at the ruins of the temple of Solomon. And in that, there, were, there was a generation that knew the temple in its former glory, and there's a generation that was present that never knew what the temple looked like. All they saw was the ruins. And uh, currently, this is the picture of where the church is at globally. The globally, the churches, there are two generations of people that are in the church. There are those that have been journeying in salvation for many years and have seen certain past moves of God. And there are uh, people that haven't experienced everything that others have experienced, but the both are standing in a place where equalization is taking place. And in the place of equalization, God is saying to them, both those that have seen it in its former glory and those that have not are both responsible to build. So how do you build with a generation that does not know what needs to be built, what it needs to look like? And then how do you build with a generation that saw what it was and they are not sure whether it will look like that again. Amen? And this is sometimes the picture of our lives. 
Some of you have experienced some measures of success in the past, uh, but you're in a place now where you are rebuilding, and you're wondering, would it ever get as good as it was? And this is the, the challenge that many of us have to deal with. And, and the biggest question, uh, which is the wrong question, would it get better like than what it was? I mean, in South Africa, we've heard so many people over the years say it was better before. But some of us do not know what the before was, but we said it was better before. You don't know. But in every generation, we are forced to live in the generation that we're in. And in the generation that we're in, we've got a responsibility to build in our generation. And we've got to understand that we have to take, and this is how God builds. God doesn't only build with the new. God's, God's direction is build on the foundations both old and new. Amen? So I want you to understand not everything that is new is always better. Some of you are saying, no, 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 pastor. New is always better. New shoes feel better than old shoes. Is it? New clothes feel better than old clothes. Is it? Some of you look at me as if, uh, Amen. But I want you to, to know that he's in this, and the Lord is saying to us, we're going to build on the foundations both old and new. And in this building process, we have to know how to build. Now, even for those that have experienced some, some losses in your life, and you've experienced some breakdown, some things that have halted things in your life. I want you to not be discouraged, but remain encouraged that the Lord will help you to build again. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, I'm trusting, God I'm trusting God for me to build again. You see, I want you to understand, we sing the song, he is the God of the do it again. That means what he's done in the past, he will do it again. Amen? But I want you to also understand that the word in, in Haggai was that the glory of the latter house will be greater than the former. It doesn't matter how it looked before. Trust God that in this season of building, it's going to be better than it's ever been. Come on. Now, some of you are looking at me and saying, this is as good as it gets. Now, you, if you, I, I always say this, if you get it into your life, if you get it into your heart and you get it into your spirit, you'll get it into your life. Amen. Amen? Because you've got to learn how to appropriate the word over your life. If you don't, then you will be always discouraged and always broken down. So may the Lord help you to be victorious. Go with me. I want you to understand that uh, how... God begins to move over our lives. So in the building process, we have to understand how heaven operates. And in understanding how heaven, heaven operates, then we will begin to change how we pray, how we believe, how we trust what God is going to begin to do. Now in Ephesians chapter 6, we have to understand that there is spiritual laws and spiritual jurisdictions in which we operate in. The problem is many of us are approaching spiritual things with a natural mindset or with an earthly mindset. Now in, 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 in Ephesians chapter 6, we know that the whole emphasis of the scripture is on spiritual warfare. But it is showing us how God responds. And it comes in, and, 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 and it says in Ephesians 6 verse 12, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. So I want you to understand this, that the, the, the Bible is saying we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Amen. That means I want you to understand that what God has in his heart and he, in his mind for us is what we should be building with. So if we've got a heavenly blueprint 
of how you should be building, you need to understand that the attack against that, that assignment that God has given you is a spiritual one. It's not a natural one. So you cannot fi fight it in the natural. But, but, but you may say, but pastor, but in the natural, I'm dealing with my family that is going chaotic. Go dealing with issues that seem to not be breaking. They seem to be dealing with things that are always there in, continuously. Now, I believe, and, and, and I've said this before, that many of us deal with generational challenges. Now, I want you to understand, in terms of understanding a generational curse, you cannot, as a believer, be under a generational curse. Let me qualify this. Why? Because if you are under a curse of what somebody has done previously in your generation, in your family, in your, in, in your extended family, what has been done before, then where does the scripture say before you were formed, I knew you? Where is the uniqueness of who you are? If you are going to be only be pain and bearing the brunt of what someone else has done before, then how is, are you, you going to be keep on dealing with the challenges? But I believe there are certain strategic attacks of the enemy against families. You understand now? So we're not saying you're under a generational curse. Because what my grandfather did and what my father did is not mine to pay. Because when you come in Christ Jesus, the Bible says you're a new creation. That means I can't blame my grandfather <clears throat> for what I'm going through. <clears throat> I can't blame my father for what I'm experiencing. So if my father had a challenge with alcohol, it does not mean that it's going to be my challenge. It may be an attack or a strategic attack of the enemy against my family that I need to be aware of. That means if my, fa if my father or my grandfather was, had multiple wives, it does not mean, ah, we like this. That's not your excuse. I'm taking away all your excuses today. It's not your excuse. But I understand that the way to diminish what I am called to do, there is a strategic attack. So infidelity in our homes shouldn't be a challenge because I need to identify that as the attack of the enemy. If it's alcoholism, then I need to attack, understand that's the attack of the enemy. That is attack according to our family. Why? That's why you do warfare. That's why the Bible says you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, spiritual wickedness. You got to identify what is the attack against your family because other than that, you won't build. What is the thing that we should be trusting God for? Mine may not be alcohol. It may not be drugs. It may not be this thing. I may just be a liar. You know, some people can just lie. Just like that. And they don't even know they're doing it because they convince themselves that they... Have you met people like that? Okay, you may not be a liar, but you may be a gossiper. People can't tell you things. You tell everything. You just, you can't keep nothing. You just, you say, oh, you, you, you heard what happened. <laughs> yeah. Some people like stories, and some people are a little bit spicy. That means they add to it. They embellish the story. You, you know those people? 
Like I wanted to tell the story about how we took Annie for lunch and instead of eating, she didn't share a meal. She ate all the chops on her own. Amen. I won't tell you how many. <laughs> I was going to say it was 15. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But, but again, some people embellish. Some people tell stories. Amen. Whatever the challenge in your life is. Amen. Some people are just secretive. God's secrets. Sometimes we do not know whether we know whether it's a secret or not. Is that? Some of us, just in terms of how we are made, sometimes we just carry burdens. But that's not how God has created you to be. God has created you. He says, whom the Son of Man has set free is free indeed. Amen? And we've got to understand what it means to be free indeed. That means we need to be completely free. Amen? Not just every now and again. So we have to understand that we, the Bible says we, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we know that the realm, is, uh, the, the realm of warfare is in the spirit realm, right? And we know that it, the laws in the spirit realm is different from the laws in the physical realm. Because the laws in the physical realm can change. But the laws in the spiritual realm doesn't change. That means it's unchanging and it's eternal. It's consistent. How many of you know that the laws in the earth changes? Is it? Because we have lawmakers that keep on changing the laws. In our country, they change the law. They change the law in terms of marriage. Just because they change the law doesn't make it right. In terms of the, the laws, the, in the uh, natural, it changes based on people and people's opinions of what they consider right. But in the laws, in the spiritual, they are unchanging. Amen? And this is why it is so important for us to understand when God says we engage in spiritual warfare, we have to understand that there are eternal principles that are at play in this, right? So there is a higher requirement to begin to follow it. But in order to engage, you have to begin to have a spiritual authority to function or fight in a spiritual realm. That means in, in, in the book of Matthew chapter 10, verses 7 and 8, it says, As you go, proclaim this message. For the kingdom of heaven is ne has come near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, Cleanse those that have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Amen? So he's talking about us understanding that there is an authority that is given to us in the spirit realm. That means as believers, we operate in a spiritual authority. But understanding that if we have an authority, we have to understand that... You, you, the authority requires an anointing, amen? And you have to have an anointing to, to engage in a certain spiritual realm, and in that, there is a spiritual jurisdiction. That means it's not applicable everywhere. You have to know how to apply what God is saying to us. So in this, I want you to understand, in our building process, we have to understand what level of engagement God requires of us. That means, is there things that we need to do? Is there things that we is required of us? If we're going to build, amen, that means if you're going to do something you've never done before, you've got to be study where you're going to. Amen? How many of you go for a job interview, and when you go for a job interview, what do you do? You prepare. You went recently for a job interview interview. What did you have to do? You have to do research on the company, what they do, what they stand for, what's their values, right? What's their core business? And understand what you bring to the company. So uh, I know that's Kerasa's job, but 
in that when you come to when you come to a company the company wants you to to be able to say how you're going to add value that means companies no longer are appointing people in strategic positions if they don't know what they bring to the company firstly they want to know you know who you are and secondly you have to be confident that you bring something that adds value they're not going to want to train someone. If you bring someone in management or you bring them into senior management, you want to bring someone in that has something to offer. Bring something that is unique, something that is really needed. Amen? If you have whatever you need, you don't employ it. That means when you, when you come, you must come bringing something. Amen? So even as a business person, you're going to sell your product, you cannot go there and say... I sell, I'm selling tea. Okay, you're selling tea. What type of tea? Black tea, green tea, red tea. What tea? Now there's all different kinds of tea. There's tea that operate like laxatives. There's tea. You know, you can take a tea. You, you, you don't have to have castor oil anymore. You, you got a tea. Amen. Some of you are buy that tea for you. But but <laughs> <laughs> then you got tea that is for cleansing. You get green tea. I mean I I, I do not know why they made that tea tea. But then you get different types of teas, right? But if you're going to sell it, you're gonna have to tell them this is why we are marketing it. You know, the world I've learned that the world today get excited about everything. Everything is a new fad. Now people, you know, when we were growing up, we only used to have loose tea. Isn't they used to sell you tea leaves? And you used to put that strainer. You put it in the, in the this thing. You never used to make one cup of tea. Now we like Lani's. Before, you had the metal jug. You know the one that looked like chumbu? You know the, in the enamel, the enamel pot. And you make one pot of tea. And every time you make that pot hot, then you have tea. No, not everyone make this. Thing. And then it was loose tea, isn't it? Now it's chai tea. It's all fancy teas, right? But that time it was just one tea. We enjoyed it, isn't it? You know, nowadays they sell loose tea. More expensive than tea bags. <laughs> that time we used to have loose tea because it was cheap. <laughs> Amen. It's just the, the way the world goes. But when you're going to sell your product, you have to tell them why your product is the best. Amen. You've got to be able to market your product because they've never tasted it. Amen. How are you able to market what God is giving to you? Are you able to use? Because whatever God has given to you is a gift that can be used for building. Amen? So I said to you, there is a spiritual realm that we are operating in. The enemy's desire is to put us in bondage. The enemy's desire is for us to lose our hope, lose our direction, lose our faith. But we need to understand if we're going to break free, we got to begin to learn to engage from the from the vantage point of heaven amen and so we need to understand that the bible says we are seated in heavenly places with christ jesus so we have to understand that jesus is our advocate he's the one that is making intercession on our behalf but he's the one uh, 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 now now advocate is different from a normal lawyer there are certain high courts that you cannot take a normal lawyer to go and defend your case. You have to get an advocate. Those are the ones that you pay a lot of money and they say very little. But you need them. In most cases, they don't even show up at court because they resolve the case before you. That's how they, you pay them for their technical abilities and for their skill. Amen? So we need to understand, but the Bible says we have an advocate in heaven. Huh? 
that, that Jesus Christ is our advocate and he is a, an advocate is someone that is fighting on your behalf. Amen. So I want you to understand this. You're not in the fight alone. Jesus is our righteous judge. He's our advocate. Amen. And, and, and that the enemy is our accuser. Now this is the one reason why many of us don't bear. Because we believe the word of our accuser. Amen. So may the Lord help us to begin to overcome. So how do we overcome? Let me give you a few points that's going to help you. How, how, how do I overcome in terms of understand what heaven has? I firstly align to God's plan and God's purpose for my life. Amen. If you want to experience breakthrough in the heavenlies, you've got to begin to understand how heaven operates and you have to align your line to God's plan. Not God aligning to your plan. Many of you take your plans and give it to the Lord. Get to the place where you say, God, I want to know what your plan for my life is. And I want to do that which is your plan. Amen? Secondly, if I learn how to begin to operate in the heavenly realm, I need to understand that in heaven, there's a place of protection. That means God has decreed protection over me. That means he says, I give my angels charge concerning you. That means you understand when I'm engaging in spiritual warfare and I'm fighting the enemy that has been fighting me, I, I understand that I am victorious because I'm not fighting alone. And that God has said, I give my angels charge concerning you. They will not allow your foot to be dashed against a stone. He's saying, he's saying, my protection is around you. Then he goes on and he says, I will build a hedge around you. So may the Lord build a hedge around you. So you understand while you are fighting, you're protected. But then you come to the place where you understand, I can partner with God. Amen? And when you partner with God, the Bible says, as it is in heaven, so shall it be on the earth. If you want to see what God's perfect plan for your life. Remember the Bible says in the book of Romans that you may know what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. How many of you know that in terms of the definition of what the will of God is, there's the good, there's the acceptable, there's the perfect will of God. We understand that there is the sovereign will of God and there's the permissive will of God. In the permissive will of God, there's the good and acceptable. But in the sovereign will of God, that's the perfect will of God. That means some of you sometimes may make decisions and choices to do certain things your own way. It's not God's way for your life, but you do it your way. And God allows it. Not because he allows it because it is not a sin what you are doing. That means instead of you go to the you go to Spur, and instead of having one breakfast, you have two. <laughs> it's okay. It's acceptable. Oh, some of you are already angry. <laughs> Amen. But, <laughs> but, but, but you understand what I'm saying, right? There are certain things you do. It's not a sin issue. And God allows it. But he doesn't. It's not his perfect will for your life. That means that in order, you need to learn how to manage yourself. But in order for, it, for God is saying, it's not an issue that will be a, a heaven or hell issue. How many of you know there are many issues that we face that are not heaven or hell issues? But they are a discipline issue. It, it, it can be a certain other character issue. Amen? So, But here he's saying that is the good and acceptable. But it's not the perfect will of God. I'd like to encourage you. Get to the place when you partner with God. You can function from the perfect will of God. Amen? Then the courts of God, the courts of heaven, is a place of power. Amen? The only way you can overcome the enemy is by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. 
You can only do all things, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So may the Lord empower you. Amen? It's a place of hope. It's a place of purpose. It's a place of life. When you come to the place of beginning to function where God wants you to, you always function in hope, in peace, and in life. Amen? Now go with me, and I want to just read these portions of scripture from the book of Ezra. Oh. And I'll leave, read it just as an introduction to something else that we will deal next week. In Ezra chapter 3, verses, let's read verses 10. And it says, And when the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, they set priests, in their, apparel, in their apparel with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals, to praise the Lord after the ordinance of heaven. And they sang, sang together by cause in praising and giving thanks unto the Lord, because he is good and his mercy endures forever. And then the Bible says in verses 12, but many of the priests and the Levites, the chiefs, chief of the fathers, who were ancient men, who had seen the first house, when the foundation of this house was laid before their eyes, they wept aloud with a loud voice. And many shouted for joy. So, the, so that the people could not discern the noise of the shout of joy from the noise of the weeping of the people. For the people shouted with a loud voice, and the noise was heard afar off. I said to you when we started, two generations that are building. One generation is weeping, another generation is shouting for joy. But the people that are hearing it is hearing one sound. I'm here to say to you today, irrespective of where you've been, irrespective of what you've gone through, irrespective of what has been the challenges in your life, I'm here to say you may be the one that is weeping or you may be the one that is shouting for joy. But the reality is the sound, it'll sound the same. Amen? In the building process, there is the place of laying the foundation. You cannot build anything unless, it, unless a foundation is firstly laid. I pray that over your life, over your spiritual life, over the life of your family, you would have a strong foundation. Amen? And in this, in this strong foundation, everything else will be built around it. In Jesus' name. Amen? We're going to build on this next week from, from the book of Ezra. I'd like you to read it, but there are some powerful principles that is important for us on how do we build. Amen? And in the laying of the foundation, before the foundation is laid, there has to be an altar that is erected. And the altar is always a place of sacrifice. Amen? Let's just bow our heads together. Father, we come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. I bring your sons and your daughters before you. As we understand how to engage from the heavenlies. Help us to build that which you desire on the earth. Because we've got a heavenly pattern, a heavenly blueprint, and heavenly plan on what we should build. But Father, teach us how to translate it into the earth without being impeded by earthly matters, by earthly mindsets, by worldly thoughts. Help us to be able to build and let it be in us. Let it be said, as it is in heaven, it is now in the earth. And so we pray today that let us be a generation that is building the purposes of God even in the earth. I pray today over our families. I pray over our marriages. I pray over our children. I pray over the church. 
I pray over individuals, single people that are, are trusting you for direction in their life. People that are coming before you and saying, God, I need you to speak to my life. Father, I pray today, let them arise and build. And let them build as wise master builders. Bless that which concerns them. Bless the works of their hand. Establish them. Not only in righteousness, but establish the works of their hand. I pray over the, those that are employed. I pray a blessing over their employment. I pray for those that are in business. I pray a blessing over their business. As they come to year end, Lord, show up. Father, for those that are in the employment, oh God, create doors and opportunities for promotion, promotion and advancement. I pray, oh God, for those that are seeking employment, Lord, open the right doors. Father, for those that got major things and plans that they have, I pray today for supernatural breakthrough in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen and amen, amen, amen. You blessed? Come.